we're going to look at what the pH curve would look like, a titration curve would look like for a strong acid, strong base. Uh, so we're going to assume we're at the equivalence point, no leftover reactants, products only. If we did a reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, that would mean no hydrochloric acid, no sodium hydroxide left, just water and sodium chloride. Well, pure water at 25 degrees has a pH of 7. That pH comes from the auto-ionization of water. Both the sodium and the chloride ions don't impact the pH because they're the cations and anions of strong acids and bases. So the pH at the equivalence point for a strong acid or base is going to be 7. So I'm going to kind of simulate what would have happened in your lab if you had been there so you could see uh, the data and the graph that would have shown up. So if you could picture using a pH meter while you titrate, I have a little picture there off to the side. Um, let's say you put that pH meter in the flask where the acid goes, and let's put 25 milliliters of a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution in a flask down below and a 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide in your burette. So before the titration begins and it's just acid only, and you wanted to know what the pH meter would say the pH is, in order to find the pH, we need the hydronium ion concentration. Since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, it dissociates completely, 100%. So the molarity of the hydronium ion matches the molarity of the hydrochloric acid. And then you guys know your equations, negative log of the H3O plus would give you your pH. So the pH of that hydrochloric acid solution just sitting there would have a pH of 1. When you're looking at these pH graphs that we're going to make, the pH graphs will have pH on the Y value and the volume of your titrant, usually the base, is going to go on your uh, x-axis there. And so if you look at the graph, how we start off there, if you've added 0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, your pH is going to be 1. Well, as you start adding base, it reacts with the acid to form water, and in our case, sodium chloride. Before you hit the equivalence point, you've started adding base, but you're not at the equivalence point yet. So maybe, let's say you've added just a milliliter or two of base. You still have a pretty large amount of acid in your flask, just a tiny little bit of base that's been added. What that means is the base is your limiting reactant at that point. It gets all used up. Your excess reactant, the acid, is there but there's less of it since some of it has been converted into water and salt. So you have less moles of acid present where that pH meter is monitoring the pH and the total volume of your solution is increasing. So if you looked at the molarity, you have less moles and a larger volume. Both of these means that the molarity of your hydronium ions going to decrease. And remember that as your H3O plus decreases, your pH is going to increase. They're opposites of one another. So you should see a gradual increase in your pH as you start to titrate. So in the beginning, maybe a pH of 1, and then as you add your base, the pH is going to start to climb. Just before you reach that equivalence point, you're starting to run out of hydrochloric acid for the sodium hydroxide to react with. So the pH before the equivalence point is dependent upon that remaining acid, how much is still there, how much is left, um, and, and what's going on there. But you're, if you're at the equivalence point, what we've been looking at before spring break there, there's no acid or base remaining, you just have products only. So suddenly the pH is based on the products alone, your water and sodium chloride. What's going to happen is your pH will suddenly spike to 7. So you can see that really sharp increase on the graph there of the line pretty much heading straight up. Um, and the pH at that equivalence point, like we said before, was going to be 7. The way you can figure out what the equivalence point is by looking at one of these graphs is to find that middle of the spike. So when you look at that uh, vertical line there, you kind of find the middle of that vertical line. 
and that's where your equivalence point is going to be. One quick thing before we keep going, just a little reminder. Uh, we usually use phenolphthalein as an indicator when we've titrated in the past, and just a little brush up on the colors there. If you do phenolphthalein plus acid, it's going to be a colorless solution. Phenolphthalein plus neutral is also colorless, but you get a color change that happens when you put phenolphthalein in a base. That's when you get that bright magenta pink. But as you guys know from titrating, the reason we aim for that really pale, light, watered down pink lemonade color is because that means we're just past neutral. We have a slight excess of sodium hydroxide that the phenolphthalein is detecting. So let's see on the next few slides where that's going to take us. 